with who I like to call Baby Brad Pitt, Drew Van Acker. Do you get that all the time? You literally are. Okay, so basically when Brad Pitt's old and crusty, which seems to never be happening, uh, you're going to take over his career. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going cra- to be a while, yeah. but you're you're such a talented actor, and I'm so excited to have you on the podcast. Right. I'm sure you guys know who he is already, and if you don't, you need to Google his ass and uh, go fall in love. Um, so we did a movie together yes, two did. years ago yeah, I called Spy forever. Intervention, where you play like a clean-cut spy. Yeah. And right now you look like <laughs> you're like right now. You look, I don't want to be mean, but you look homeless in a weird way. I was like, is everything okay? You <laughs> look like been... Drew. You come do my podcast. Has have things been okay since the film? Like, is everything good? Did you? <laughs> no, but we did this film two years <laughs> ago, and you literally had short hair. Yeah. And I was just I was uh, just dating my husband. I'm yeah. married now. Yeah. You're super, engaged. Super Sorry, ladies, he's engaged. Yeah. Google them anyway. Anyway, so um, I'm excited to have you here. Yeah. No, this, this is, is great. Amazing. This is amazing. I love your show. How's so. life? Life is good. Life is really good. Yeah? Um, you know, promoting the film now. Yeah. we're seems like, like we talked about, it seems like it's forever ago. Yeah. Um, but it also doesn't because I'm kind of now, you know, sitting here with you and I'm thrown into all these, these I, you know, the interviews and stuff. So get, getting to talk about it is like. Oh, it feels it's relieving almost in a way. Yeah, it yeah. is. Um, it's actually so crazy because I had to like reread what the film was about because that's how bad my my memory is of life. I'm like, I don't know what happened to me as a child. <laughs> I was, you went in and reread the script. I was you like, were... who did I play again? Oh yeah. Um, so I play Brianna Brown, who is Poppy De Levine's best friend, and yep. you play Corey Gage. Yep who is Poppy's husband in the film, or yeah. boyfriend. You guys end up being husband yes. and wife. Yes. I don't want to give the film away, but basically the here's film... What here's what happens. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the whole film. So basically, <clears throat> um, your character is a spy. Yes. And he is sick of spy life. He wants to become a regular run-of-the-mill dad, minivan, white picket fence. I don't know if I'd say wants, but kind of gets thrusted into that right i think he's looking for um a mix-up he's looking for something a change in his life you know what i mean yeah it's totally he's living this this uh, stereotypical you know male fantasy international spy right life um and i think when he meets pam it's kind of a it's kind of a, a an out that i think he's he's secretly subconsciously been looking for yeah um and I don't think he was really prepared for what that entailed, but right. yes, you're on the you're on the track. So I'm on the right track. So I kind of know what I'm talking about, guys. <laughs> um, so he meets Pam, who's played by Poppy. You guys meet in the mall. You bump into her, yeah. and then they kind of fall in love. It's like love at first sight, and then it's how you, it always happens. Yeah, it's how it always happens, mm-hmm. right? You just mm-hmm. bump into somebody at the mall, like, oh, I think I'll spend the rest of my life with you, <laughs> and then you guys fall in love. You end up moving in together, and then it becomes the like r- regular life. Yes. The um, I don't want to say mundane. It is though. It, it can be. I mean, that's right? real life. I mean, you're married. I'm married. What is it like? It's. I just... doubt you're living that. Lifestyle. No, I'm definitely not. I mean, you see my husband. He's fucking psycho. I mean, and I'm I don't psych- think he would be. I no, don't think he'd be no. okay with the with the dinner parties. I mean, the... the two of us are pretty <clears throat> insane. So like, it's not totally run of the mill. But <laughs> my dog's just giving you fleas. That's so rude. <laughs> oh, she doesn't have fleas. She just has allergies. She's so cute. But yeah. So I, I mean, being married is great. It is. Cr- it is true though. It does go from like. The honeymoon experience to all of a sudden you're just this is it. This, this is, is it. You're well, just how married. How long does that period last between you and, <sighs> and everyone who's listening? I mean, what did you think? I think the honeymoon period lasted for like a year. A year. Like when you get you get sure. like you know what I mean. Like when you first start dating, you're like, oh, I'm excited. Like butterflies can't this eat. Is new and- it's new. <laughs> it's yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. And now I just like throw down an entire chocolate cake in front of my <laughs> husband. Like, don't look at me. Like it's so disgusting. I'm just like ah. Give me tacos. You know what I mean? Like I can't. I have no chill now. But when way, I first is, started, this is dating. what it was like filming with you. Yeah, because I'm psycho. It was it was tough. Uh, yeah. I did an interview recently, <laughs> not because you're psycho, because you're hilarious. But I did an interview recently, and they were like, you know, what was it like working with with Brittany and Blake, and you know these people who come from this comedy, you know, background. Yeah. And I was like, it was so hard. It was so hard. I said I found myself totally not present in the scene because I would just kind of like. 
watch. You're like, what the fuck <laughs> am I doing watching. here? Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but in the scene, in the scene we're in the house, it's towards the end of the film, I won't give anything away, but we're in the house and there's some dancing going on mm-hmm. and your character's in the back of the scene. Oh my God, yes. And I don't know if you remember me from across the room. I'm not on camera, thank God. But I just remember... I couldn't take my eyes off you. I was just watching you the entire time because it was absolutely hilarious. Just in, like, okay, because I can't sit still, sit still, so I'm like so ADD. Then Drew was having me like eat apples. Do you remember that? He had me eat like 35 apples. I had to, I shit for like four days. I was like, it's too much fiber. It was too much fiber. Like in the scene, he's like, I think it'd be really funny if you were just in the back eating apples. <laughs> it was. And then I had to do like 35 takes eating apples. Yeah, that's apples. the thing is you didn't, you didn't. No, for it. hell no. I hate apples now. I want to say it was right after lunch too. It was, it was not fun. But <laughs> the movie was so fun. Doing the film was fun. Anyway, guys, yeah. make sure you check it out. Spy Intervention. It's out now. Yeah. Okay. It came out on Valentine's Day, which is my anniversary. I got married. Is on it really? Day. Yes. Yeah. And I'm super excited. And so it's perfect. It couldn't be like a better. It's a total Valentine's Day. It's a total. Total Valentine's Day movie. It's fun. Yeah. It'll make you laugh. I promise. And Drew is an amazing actor. You have a big, big future ahead of you. Oh, thank you. You really do. Yeah. But let's talk about all the bad shit that's happened to you. Oh man, where do we here? Begin? Get closer to the mic so we can get yeah. it all in. Where do where do we where do we begin? <laughs> talk <here>? about. <clears throat> so where did you grow up? I grew up. Um, uh, I, I I lived all over. I was born in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh, you were? Yeah. I was born Nebraska. In Omaha, Nebraska. So how'd you end up in L.A.? Um, a horse. <laughs> <laughs> one day, one day, I just got on my goddamn my goddamn horse, and I fucking rode him, and he took me all the way to Los Angeles. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, seriously, that's how it happened. Really? Um, no, I, I I only lived in Nebraska for a couple years. Okay, and then when I you moved were little. To, yeah, I was little, and then I moved to Indianapolis, Indiana. Wow. Lived there for a couple years, um, and then to South Jersey. Oh, hey, yeah. that's like where I'm, Philadelphia. Yeah. Like, yeah, Jersey. Okay. I think we talked about this. Yeah, I think A little so. bit. A little bit. Um, I don't remember. So anything. I moved to South Jersey. And it was like, you know, formative years. Right. South Jersey. Um, so that's, you know, I guess I consider that's where I grew up. Uh-huh. And then I didn't get to L.A. until I had kind of moved around again. I went to school in Maryland and um, then moved to New York. Uh-huh. And then. Did you go to New York by yourself? Yeah. You did? Yeah. You moved to New York completely by yourself? Yeah, I was 19. I was, um. Was twenty to act. To, well, to try. Yeah, <laughs> I ro- didn't know you, what it meant. You rode your horse to New York. <laughs> damn, there's a lot of it. cars in here. <laughs> Where I park my horse? God damn it, Clyde! Awakening. Stop shitting on the street. I had a rude awakening. Pretty. Did quick. you? Um, no, but I, yeah, I went up there to to you know try to like try to act, try to get my SAG card. I didn't really right. know what that meant. Do extra work. Oh, um, I know. We all did that, didn't we? And like, I had no idea what I was doing. I no, I just knew that I wanted to be in this uh-huh. this business. I knew I wanted to be a part of it. Right. So I went up there, and um, I, li- I ended up living in, in Harlem. Um, in Harlem? Yeah, Harlem. By yourself? On 135th and Madison. No, I lived with um, I lived with a a um, one of the one of the guys who worked at the agency that I was oh. at. So he had a place, and he had a room for rent. Uh-huh. And um, so I lived with him up in Harlem, and we ended up getting evicted. Why? While I was there, <laughs> and he wasn't. What? The whole st- uh, um, so I guess. Somebody wasn't paying the rent. I was paying my rent to that person. But he wasn't paying it. And I guess he wasn't paying the rent. Stop. Um, and I, I, just, I was sitting in the ca- in the kitchen one day and was making like peanut butter sandwich or something. We had no money. At the making time. a water you know? sandwich. <laughs> water sandwich. <laughs> just putting ice cubes on bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I felt like that was the case. But I was sitting there and I just remember this boom, boom, boom on the door. And I was like, oh, my God, you know, what Scary. is this? Because, I, was, you know, I was living in Harlem, so I didn't know what right. what, the, what was going on. Um, and they just came in. They kicked the door in. There was about six guys came in. And they were they were very nice. You know, it wasn't as, as scary as For as breaking down your door, they were nice. The and, yeah. and I'm just standing there in the kitchen, you know, I got peanut butter all over my head. <laughs> and they're like. <laughs> dicks out. They're like, this is, what did we. This, <laughs> dog in the corner yeah. um they're like this isn't what we thought yeah we'll come back later um <laughs> so i'm like i'm i'm standing there and they're like you know are you on the lease and i said no i'm not on the lease you know I'm, i live here but i'm not on the lease and they said well you have uh you have 10 minutes 10 you gather minutes your stuff gather your whatever you can and uh and, and get out what yeah and you had peanut butter fingers <laughs> I, had peanut butter fingers <gasps> I couldn't sandwich. touch anything i got peanut butter fingers <laughs> quick, quick wipe down um and then i just remember going into my room and thinking well, I called the guy I was living with, and he didn't answer. But I, I remember thinking, like, all right, I just grab the important shit, you know, grab the important stuff. 
So I grabbed like checkbooks, passports, oh IDs, um, you know, and I had fully moved in because I had gone straight from, I'd left college early, so I went straight from college yeah. and brought my whole like dorm room up to New York City. Wow. So it was everything. Um, so I just grabbed a couple of things, not knowing the next step and, and left the place and went down to the agency because I had nowhere else to go. So long story short, they came, wiped everything out, like cleaned out the apartment. They take it to a storage unit. Oh my God. And, uh, I, they said, you can come get the rest of your stuff in the storage unit in Yonkers. And so I was like, okay. So I had my dad, I said, can you come help me rent a U-Haul and we'll go up there. And this was, I mean, we could make a movie out of this. Yonkers doesn't even it sound was, like a real place. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in Yonkers. You ever seen Cool Cool Town, that movie, Cool World? It's in there. You ever seen that? It was It was a trip. I'd never been. This is my first time going to Yonkers. And so you my dad and I, he'd never been, oh obviously. Oh, my God. And um, so we had this huge, because I had beds, mattresses, uh, nightstands, dressers. So we had this huge U-Haul trying to get it through these tiny, you know, New York City streets in oh Yonkers. Oh, my God. It was a scene out of, you know, a, a movie. And... Um, we get to the storage unit and they're like, all right, here's your unit, you know, go get whatever you can and, and start loading it up. So we go to the unit and I'm like, this can't be ours. You know, there's nothing in here. And uh, there was, I mean, everything was gone. Everything was picked clean. Was, I don't know, I don't know shit? who took it or when they took it, but in the process of me leaving that first time and it getting moved to this unit. Um, oh my god! You know, because there was a, there was a, it was so, there was no regulation on that's this, illegal, so. isn't it? Oh, I'm sure it is in some. I didn't in think most you, cases. Yeah, I didn't think you could uh, evict someone that quickly. I think you had to give them like a notice. I have no idea. I I remember thinking back on it and talking to my dad on the drive up and being like, "Is this even legal?" And I think we both kind of came to the conclusion that it wasn't. No, but. I had no, like, what am I going to say? These six guys burst in the door, you know what I mean? I'm 19 years old. Yeah. The time, and they're like, you know, you got to go. And I couldn't get a hold of the guy. Whatever happened to him? He said that he was paying the rent. Something happened. I gave up. I was like, look, this is a sign. Yeah. I'm going to move to L.A. Because my agents had all been like, you need to get to L.A. if you want to do this, you know, full time. Yeah. And really act. So I've kind of been, like, thinking about doing yeah. it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so I just kind of got everything we could out of the storage unit, put it in the U-Haul. And, um, and you know, head out. How were you? I went back to Jersey with my parents, yeah. unloaded it. Oh, my God. On them. <laughs> unloaded it on them. A Your bunch parents of stuff. are like, God damn it, <laughs> fucking kid. They're like, we don't want, you yeah. know, all this stuff. Yeah. And so I, I just basically, um, shortly after that, packed up my car with, with what I had left and, and, you know, personal stuff and moved out to Moved out to LA. So wow. Yeah. Okay. I wait, don't so know how we even got on that. How did you survive? Like, what, what did you do for work? How did in you make money? New York. Yeah. In New York, I was doing commercials. I was doing print work. Oh, so you were making a living. I was well doing your a what you living. Do. Yeah, I've paid very little rent thanks to the guy I was living with. He, yeah, you know, who wasn't paying rent. <laughs> yeah, who yeah. wasn't. So neither of you were paying rent. <laughs> yeah, no one was paying rent. Um, but I don't. I get. I don't know if I can say making a living, but it was. I was surviving. Surviving. You know what I mean? It okay. was like very little money um, coming in. You know, doing extra work, hundred dollars. I know, like crazy, right? So. It was um it was like an experience for sure. Right. It was definitely like okay, I know I was on sets and um you know, on sets of, you know, big movies and stuff and, and I, I knew right away that this is where I wanted to be. Yeah. But I just didn't know in like what aspect, like how like I need to really do this. Because being an extra, it's like it's great. Right. You get to kinda get your feet wet a little bit. Uh -huh. But I needed to know, you know, more. Right. Like I had done drama and stuff previously, but I needed to kinda know this is where I needed to be, so I moved out. Um but yeah, it was tough. It was tough because New York's not cheap. No, you know I, mean? I was New gonna say, cheap. I'm like, damn, like that must have been really hard. Yeah. Okay, so then you pack all your stuff up. Yeah, yeah. You go to L.A. L.A. And how do you start in L.A.? Um, just grinding, I guess. I mean, I can't say grinding. I I had connections in L.A. through my print agency in New York. Okay. So they were like, okay, meet this person and stay with this person. It was like a um, it was a model's apartment. Oh my God! Tell me and stories about the yeah, models' apartment. It was, it was wild. It was was wild. it fucking gnarly? Was there just cocks out everywhere? Yes, just all the cock. Time. <laughs> Good morning. Who wants sausage? That's all it was. Stop. They and just I wake you up with a dick in yeah, the face. You're like, I gotta get out of here. It wasn't for me, so I was like, I need to. I need to get out of here. Am I being dead serious? No, no. I'm okay, joking. okay. I'm joking. But um, I heard those model apartments are nightmares. It was. This one was okay. I met actually a couple guys that you know I still keep in contact with to this day. Believe it or not. 
Um, Isn't it like four dudes to one bedroom? It was. T- it was like at one point we had five guys in a studio apartment. Stop. Yeah. And what do you have? Bunk beds. Bunk beds. Stop. Yeah. Like like a b- friend's. And this over. wasn't like a big like, you know, flat. You know. What I mean? Yeah, this was I like know. A, this was a, the North Hollywood um, studio apartment, so it was. It was a little weird because I was like, you know, you don't know what to expect, but at the same time, you're just grateful to like park your I had a Mazda three and I, you just park it like you're just grateful to have a place to park it. Yeah. And to have a bed to sleep in because, yeah. you know, you're like, well, where am I going to go? Do you have any bad stories of anything that happened while you were in the model apartment? Um, I got I got I mean, I don't know if I'd say bad. They were, they, we had a lot of fun. You had a lot of, fun. had a lot of fun. They were cool. Because like everybody hung out together, you know. It was oh, a, okay. So if you have five guys in one room, there was also um, a girls' room, oh, you know, down next the hall. Door. Yeah. So you know, we all hung out. We'd all go to Six Flags. We'd all go out and like, wow. We'd go to like Universal City Walk. We'd you just all around. piled together your change. You're like, we can. A bunch of twenty one year old, twenty twenty one year old, walking around, That's... no idea what we're doing. Wow. Where to go. Yeah, it was weird. Very so what weird. was your first like big big break? My first big break was probably um, was probably this show that I did for Cartoon Network called Tower Prep. Okay. Which was amazing. It was fun? It was amazing because it was their first live action show. Uh-huh. So they wanted to really kind of up the ante a little bit. Uh-huh. And I got to play the lead character, um, this guy Ian Archer. And he's like this high school kid. Yeah. Who um, is a bit of an outcast. Uh-huh. And he wakes up one day in this prep school oh. this like it's very harry potter-esque this prep Whoa. school and he has no idea how he got there he has no idea you know where this school is like who wow. knows that he's there and he's in this uniform uh-huh um and everything is like regimented everyone's just going with the plan and no one's like answering his questions so it was totally Whoa. you know this weird world to wake up in and uh you find out that each person in the school is like gifted in a way they each have an ability not like like special power like, but uh, almost like for example, my character had um, um, like almost like a sixth sense, oh. so he could he, he made him a great martial artist because he could kind of sense people's movements and almost like a spider sense. So you, you did martial arts in this in this Cartoon oh, yeah. Network? Oh, that was amazing! I got to do my own stunts. I got to break you know glass, wow. fly through windows. Oh my god! Did you ever get hurt? I never did because the really dangerous stuff they gave to the stunt double, of oh. course. But you're like, I never I did. He, a couple of them died. <laughs> no, a no, not even joking. We we had this scene where there was a fight and there, we. They made up this sport for the show. It was a combination of like hockey and lacrosse and like on rollerblades. It was amazing. Uh huh. Um, and my stunt guy had to like block a stick. You know, uh-huh. They were trying to fight me on the court. And I remember he just went through the scene amazingly. He uh-huh. came out and I was like, dude, that was absolutely spectacular. Uh huh. And he was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, I felt it. He's like, I think I got hit. And I look at his thing, and his, his forearm is split. I'm not even kidding. From side to side, it's totally split. I mean, I was like, and he's bleeding he's everywhere. Bleeding, he's bleeding. He's like, yeah, man, he just, I'm sick. Love no, him in the shop. No, seriously. Yeah, he didn't. <laughs> he even, passes out. He didn't even flinch. He was like, this. I, I can't remember what he said, but he's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, I'll get that cleaned up. But oh my god. He's like, he's good, right? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> wow. You're like, <laughs> you are you okay, bro? I like, have to get that looked at. Damn. Yeah. yeah. But it was fun. It was a fun show because I got to, you know, it was my first leading role. Uh huh. So it kind of opened my eyes to kind of a lot of like what was in store yeah for an actor, you know because i had done a couple guest stars and co-stars at mm-hmm. that point but nothing like that but now you're on set every day, every day. The show you got a huge script yep um but i met my you know my best friend was on the show mm-hmm. um ryan this guy ryan pinkston and we met on the show you know we're still best friends to this day wow i know ryan i've heard of him yeah he was on, on punk punked. Yeah. yes 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 funny guy that's crazy okay yeah. so then and then you went on to do like pretty little liars yeah. and actually from that tower prep show we uh-huh. came back and our showrunner this guy glenn morgan uh-huh. who i haven't talked to in a while glenn if you somehow are listening I shout out to glenn morgan um, um he was glenn i show- could also use a real job <laughs> just kidding go ahead <laughs> he was the showrunner and he came back and um i think the story goes that marlene king is the yeah. young executive producer of pretty little Liars. He had spoken to her about um, me at some dinner or some function they were going to um, together. Wow. He said he just got off a show with this guy and he was great, wow. you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, and she was like, we're looking for somebody to replace one of the actors who played um, Sasha's older brother. Yeah. And so they kind of just brought me right in, straight to meet Oliver and, oh my and, God. and Marlene. Yeah. And then that was it. And that was it. We had a, I read with them and we kind of chatted for a little bit. And, oh my god! You know the rest. The rest is history. But they were just so, 
like so open and so loving and just so generous with me. Wow. Right off the bat. Nice. Um, so I went, you know, right from that show, we found out it wasn't going to season two, mm-hmm. which is a surprise to everybody. Right. Um, and just went right at the Pretty Little Liar. So. Wow. The guy who broke his arms all like, God damn it. <laughs> <and> fuck. <laughs> all for nothing. Yeah, all for fucking uh, nothing. I, I didn't even complain about this, this fucking broken arm. <laughs> um, so that's crazy. So then yeah. life was good. LA has treated you very well. Yes, yes. LA's, um, ah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so LA's tell me, but you know LA is a fucked up place. I do know. And yeah. everyone knows that, that I lives I here. I did before. I was you one of those people. Was... I was one of those people that came with, you know, rose colored. You're all, Hollywood <laughs> is where the dreams come true. It's Hollywood. And then you get your just like fucking people shitting on the sidewalk yeah. and fucking cocaine yeah. and everyone's depressed. I think I saw that actually. Yeah. Time, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I mean, look, I always say, it's like any it's like any city I guess. I mean I, I came from New York so I kinda yeah. had a little bit of an idea of an idea as to how uh, you know the big cities could be, but there's it has pros and cons. There's yeah. ups and downs, right? I yeah. mean there's a lot of stuff that I like. I mean you, if you can't find it in Los Angeles then you're probably not gonna find right. it. You know? It's there's so many opportunities, there's so many doors that can open for you in this town and close on you and close (laughs) on you exactly close and and open um so what about but okay so you're engaged now yeah but how did it how long did it take to find the right person because it's hard (laughs) in this city it is hard it is hard but i was i was one of those people that was never looking Oh. You know, I was so wrapped wow, up. In so my- lucky. I'm all, <laughs> please, somebody, God damn it, somebody love me. I just, me. I, please. <laughs> You're just like, I just, they just come to me. I'm just like no, a shiny. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I was like, I was just, I don't know. I, I feel like I was wrapped up in my own world, you know, like just trying to figure this all out. Focusing on like, how do I, you know, what's the next job or what's this mm-hmm. and whatever. I was so into this, like, I moved out here for this. That's what I'm going to do. Wow. Everything else kind of falls to the wayside, you know. Um, but I met her seven years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and we had a, a bit of a rocky start, but you know. What was? How did you guys meet? We met at a bar that she worked at, and oh, I was cool. there with some friends. And um, I, we had, I think, two mutual friends at the time who kind of uh-huh. introduced us, and um, it kind of slowly. Oh, grew. You know, grew. Over time. And we were both like not rushing anything and whatever, but I think we, we, we knew there was a connection right off the bat. That's so, nice. And it was like a different connection as I look yeah. back on it now. I've met, you know, a ton of women and you, you just, it just felt a little different. It almost felt um, like we were really, really good friends before we even knew each other. Wow. In a weird way. I've had that happen you with know? people. You have? Yeah. yeah. Do you believe in like previous lives? I do. I believe in a lot of stuff. Tell um, me. Tell me everything. <laughs> tell me everything you believe in. <laughs> I do. I do. I believe that. I believe for sure that that there was, you know, possibly some sort of connection, you know, in a previous life or yeah. a previous reality or anything like that. Right. Well, I, I've I came out here with a very open mind. Um, what does that mean? It just means in the sense <laughs> of like I don't I don't discredit anything. Okay. You know what I mean, I wasn't okay. raised very religious or mm-hmm. very you know in any sort of way. So I've kind of I came out with just this mindset that like you know i'm gonna find it for myself i'm gonna research myself and kind of what i believe is because i've done the research and you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's like i whereas i felt growing up it was all like oh you're gonna be this because because we are because your parents are you know what i mean and my parents never forced that on me Mm -hmm. which was great so so um they let you find they kind of let me find it in myself you know you know i did church and everything growing up but yeah it's one of those things where immediately i was like this i just don't you know, I don't know. Yeah, something know else. This. Yeah, I was like, I want to figure it out for myself right. kind of situation. Um, That's so, yeah. very cool. Anyway, long way of saying, yes, I believe in other. That's so and, cool. Okay, yeah. so what are some of the craziest things that have happened to you since you've been mm. out here? You have to have, like, at least one insane story to tell me um, from your L.A. life. Yeah, I mean, I have a ton. I have a ton of stories. I got my... I got in a motorcycle accident. You yeah, did? Yeah, I got in a motorcycle accident not too long ago. No, recently? Um, no, it was a couple years ago, but, okay, but it you... still seems fresh. Oh. Um, yeah, I got a couple scars. I got a scar Oh, my here. God. I got one under my chin. <gasps> oh, I see it. Yeah, I got, wow. um, I got a little one here and then a little one down here. I uh, I was coming down Laurel Canyon. Oh, my like God. Just after Mulholland. You're like the fifth person. Really? That had well, I've no. had two friends die on Laurel Canyon, really on motorcycles. Yes, but go ahead. Oh God, keep it's going. Not it's not yeah. good. Yeah. Um. So I was coming down Laurel Canyon just after Mulholland, and uh, I was in the right lane, and I think 
you know there's no shoulder really it's just yeah. it's very tight and there's that sh- that big curve right mm-hmm. and i was coming around the outside and i think the guy who was in the in the first la- inside lane mm-hmm. he didn't see me or he heard me and he thought i was behind him so he went to get over mm. but he didn't know i was in his blind spot you know and so he came over and he just barely barely touched like the front um uh, spoke uh, axle right you know. right but he, he bumped barely it. barely yeah. and so when he touched it i kind of was trying to move out of the way yeah and it just sent me into the there's like that half a foot between the, yeah. the lane and, and the, the curb and, the, yeah. and that's all sand so yeah. it sent me into that and i i it, my tire hit the curb gravel you know gravel lost yeah. the lost thing thank god i was able to jump off the the pegs and i kind of pulled my legs out and pushed off the back of the bike because my leg would have been pinned and the bike you know it's downhill i was uh-huh. doing probably 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour. And the bike slid uh, down Laurel Canyon for, you know, 20 feet. Did you think you were going to die when I it was happening? My biggest thing was when I jumped off the back, I had a book bag on as well. So I slid on my back. Oh, my God. So my back was saved with this book bag. And, like, Thank I think God. I had rolled at some point because I hit my chin, Ooh. you know, and, like, kind of, like, rolled. Yeah. Um, and I think I hit the guardrail. Do you remember bounced. it? I don't remember that. I remember laying in the street, though. I remember laying in the street and thinking, um, you have to get up. Somebody's going to run you over because there's no shoulder. Oh, my God. I and I, and I, I have this haunting memory of laying there. But it was all so quick. It was split yeah, seconds. Yeah, it, was yeah. not, it was not as dramatic and drawn out as I'm making it be. But um, I remember laying there and looking up and seeing two, two or three cars went past me in the other lane and, and looked down <laughs> – they're like, that sucks. Late for my Starbucks appointment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looked down at me, and I, I remember kind of like, they didn't even confused, stop. Kind of like, no, didn't stop. And then, as I like come to, this big truck blocks my lane, and he oh, gets out, my God. and he's like, you know, I saw it from the top of the hill. You know, are you okay? He's like, you know, I want to. He wanted to block the lane so no one could accidentally run me oh over. Cause I'm in God. the middle of the road. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and I was so jarred. I didn't even know what was happening, so I just remember being like, yeah, can you just help me get the bike up? Yeah. So, Dead. The bike's so in like the 10 bike, pieces. The bike, He's like, all right, well, here's a spoke. The bike was mangled. Stop. It, it, the, the handlebars were like this, but the tire was straight. The gearbox was busted. I couldn't I couldn't shift into any gear, so I, I was in, it was in first gear, and it started, and it was all downhill. Thank God at the time, I lived at the bottom of Laurel Canyon, um, kind of up on the hillside. Uh-huh. So I, I, he helped me get the bike up. And mind you, at the time, I'm bleeding from my chin. Why did you not um, call an ambulance? I was so shocked. I, I was so shocked. You know, and the guy that hit me didn't stop either. So oh, like, my God. What a dick. I didn't really know. I was, you know, they say you get an accident, you're very, like, yeah. discombobulated. Yeah. And that was me, for sure. You have, like, adrenaline. Too. Oh, it was 100% adrenaline. Yeah. I got on the bike, and I just coasted. And he followed me. This guy was, I, I don't know who he is or, or, you know, anything about him, oh. but he was, like, the sweetest man. Um Guardian Angel. Good Samaritan. You know what I mean? yeah. There are he, good people left in the world. Yes, there are. Yes, there are. He, he kind of followed me, and I just had it in first gear. And I was, I, I remember bleeding, and I remember my, my shirt, I had a denim shirt on, and it was torn, oh like all God. torn up. But I was so, like, adrenaline was pumping. I just wanted to get home. I thought this isn't as bad as I, it, you know, could have been because mm-hmm. I'm still conscious and, right. like, nothing's broken or anything like that. So... I just coasted. I went. I remember I ran a red light at Fryman. Oh my god! At Fryman, yeah, I ran yeah. that red light. <laughs> I remember people just looking at me. They're like, "That guy okay? You're just blood, like, just blood." Imagine, around. imagine being. Like, at, we're gonna let him go. <laughs> <laughs> Your head's falling off. Imagine <laughs> being at Fryman Canyon, just going no. like about to go for a hike, and like some guy just rolls through the red light. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm you know laughing. What I mean? No, yeah, I'm laughing at it now too. Horrible. Like bloodied up. Yeah, just, just like, hey, what's up? Did you see that? Like, did I just imagine? Jesus that? Christ! And I just coasted. Um, to the place I was staying at the time, to the condo, and um, my roommate, who was, it was Ryan Pinkston at the time, he was like, holy shit. Bro, like, you what good? What the fuck? Like, yeah. Are you good? And he saw me, and he called my girlfriend at the time, who's now my fiance. Yeah. And she, and she came over, and I remember thinking like, all right, I can just get the gravel out of all, I, I, I was standing there, and there was just dirt and tar. I, my, by like the way, in your skin. I had a whole scar going up like a snake going up the side of my arm. You can't see it because it healed really well, but. Oh my God. And there was gravel and like asphalt in it. So I thought maybe I can just wash it out. It'll heal. But it I'll was like okay. in your skin. It was in there. So I, they, she came over and she was like, look, let's take you to the, to the hospital. We, yeah. went, we went to the urgent care. Thinking yeah. this was Where like, they're like, they have they, nothing. They're like, we got some popsicle sticks and they, a thermometer. <laughs> I don't know what you want us to She's do like, here. Here's, here's some Advil. Go ahead. Um, but <laughs> oh she goes, God. you have to go to the the burn unit. Like, go to the emergency room. 
like down the street. So I was like, oh shit. Whoa. So we went down there and they basically were like, yeah, come on in. You're the third one today. Oh my God. You know, motorcycle. Motorcycle. Yeah. It's just, that's the nature. That's the, the, the reality of it. Um, and so we went in and they, they kind of took care of me and, and one of the most painful things I've ever done, they just gave me some morphine and they just scrubbed the open wounds, um, the asphalt and the rocks oh and the tar God. all out of, and the sand all out of these open wounds. These, these, was it the know, most painful flesh. thing was, you've ever experienced? It was up there, yeah. It was for sure. I remember sitting there, and they gave me a towel to bite down on, <sighs> morphine and, like, this thing to squeeze. And they're like, look, we're not going to sugarcoat it. This is very painful. This is going to be very painful. Whoa. And then, of course, I get there, and the doctor's like, yeah, all right, we'll get you taken care of. And then he sends in, you know, the first time – um, nurse Person who's never know, done it before. Hi, no, she was literally I'm just going right out of through, college. <laughs> she yeah. was going through a checklist Stop. with him, which you know she did great. Mm-hmm. But at the time, it just didn't help the the nerves a little bit. She was like, "Okay, so I have my, okay, I have my cause. Uh, I have my." Meanwhile, you're just sitting there and blood's pouring out of your arm. You're like, like, "No, Colts, we got all day, Diane. Just go <laughs> ahead and fuck, dude." Yeah. Do you still ride a motorcycle? Yeah. I. Do not yeah, as your I main do. source. I don't. No, I don't as my main source. No. Okay. I didn't. I took a while off, and then um, the guy who did a bunch of the custom. Oh my god, so cute. Is by she's the way. so cute. Um, do you die? Um, I can't. I know, she's my best friend. I have no real friends. <laughs> it's my only friend. Um, so yeah, they I, the guy who fixed my bike. He fixed it up, and um, it sat in the garage for a while because I was like, you know, I, I can't really see get back on, dude. And then I did, and it slowly. Because the thing is too is like I almost, if it was my fault. It would have been easier to jump back on and be like, just don't make that mistake. Right, right, right. But, but it, it kind of harkens else. back to the whole thing of like, it's not if, it's when mm-hmm. in, in Los Angeles it's for true. sure because you know, I told it's not you. you. You can be the best motorcycle rider in the world and, you know, if they don't see you. Yeah. Two of my friends dead. Yeah. One, uh, the first time was on Laurel Canyon. Wow. Someone fucking didn't see him, moved over, and he fucking hit the thing and flipped, and then someone else hit him in the other lane. That was wow. it. Just like what would have happened to you. Wow. And then another friend of mine was on the 101, and uh, he was riding next to the guardrail, mm-hmm. and somebody didn't see him, and they pushed him into the guardrail, and his bike hit it and flipped over to the other side, and then he got hit by another car on the other side. Oh, my God. Isn't that fucking crazy? And these are both people that have been riding motorcycles for, like, eight exactly. years. It wasn't it them. It was other people just not seeing them. That's how it goes. Yeah. It's so gnarly. And then I read... When all this was happening to them, I read that like if a motorcycle is your main, and I might fuck this up, but you can Google it. If a motorcycle is your main source of transportation in LA, your life expectancy is five years. Oh my God. If it's your main source. No, it seems about right. Because people are so horrible out here. Everyone's in a fucking rush. Everyone's got to go get their juice. Everyone's late to an audition. (laughs) Like, but you know what? It's It's the worst. Like, no one works. Everyone's on the road. It's made me a better driver. Yeah. Not the accident, but even like since. I started riding a motorcycle. Yeah. I'm now cautious, you know, a lot more hyper aware yes. of not just motorcycles, you know, because they are in your blind spot and they kind of teach you if you're ever in control, yeah. speed up or slow down. Uh-huh. Stay out of the blind spot, you know, if you can as a motorcycle rider. But um, it's made me a better driver too, just watching, being yeah. cautious where I, where I look and where I turn and before I do it and, you know. It's really scary. I mean, guys, like, literally, like, every day, just be so... I mean, I know whoever's listening to this, you could be in, like, Wisconsin. It doesn't matter. Just be careful. Driving, it's like... I just got a car, a new car, and I'm so grateful. It has, like, this feature that if I go to switch a lane and there's anything there, even a motorcycle or... uh, It beeps. Yeah. So it goes boop, 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 boop. And I'm like, oh, thanks. Thank God. You know what I mean? Even if I'm, like, moving out of my lane a little bit, it beeps. It's just always beeping. Not every car. (laughs) I'm just so paranoid all the time. I'm like, ah! I have to drive in a perfectly straight line. <laughs> I can see you too. Like, your mind just, wandering. You're just just about to drive off a cliff. <laughs> you know what I mean? The, you kind of come. Got to get to my podcast. All, mom. Oh yeah. We've all had that moment though, where you just kind of like, how did I get? Like, how did do you I ever, get to this moment? Do you ever have that there? moment where like you're literally driving and you're like trying to get somewhere and and you just don't real you're completely not even thinking 100%. and then you get there and you're like i don't even remember 100%. how i got yeah. there like you're just driving and you're like you're not even in your could've body r- could have ran could have ran like, <gasps> you're no not idea. even in your body no. yeah. isn't that so that's funny too that's i mean that's that's something that i've kind of been working on as well as like just being aware yeah. like mindfulness a little bit like yeah. being present and like cuz i'll find myself 
day, like, I don't want to say daydreaming, but just kind of like in another place, right? you know, and not really present in, in or grounded in the reality of just the present moment. You I know? feel like we all do that. And oh, I think absolutely. it's because like we're absolutely. so overstimulated all the time that our <laughs> body's like, I need a goddamn break. OK, <laughs> like this is way too fucking much. Um, OK, guys, we are going to take a quick break and we'll be right back on Worst First with Drew Van Acker. Woo! Am I saying that right? Yeah. OK, good, good, good. Are we rolling? We're rolling. We're back. Okay, guys, I had to take my beanie off. I was getting hot. Here you go, Nina. There you go, Nina. Nina the wiener. You want to be a skater, girl? There you go. Um, so cute. So, she, she's so cute. So I went to, um, I haven't washed my hair in seven days. Sorry, I was going to say, nasty. I was going to say, I was like, this is crazy. The unprofessional. You're like, I just saw a spider <laughs> <laughs> crawl out of your head. Um, okay, so I was talking, you just said that your last name is... Dutch. Stutch, yeah. It's Stutch? It's Stutch. <laughs> it's Dutch, right? Yes. Okay, and I just said I went to Amsterdam, which made no sense. <laughs> yeah. But it was such a cool yeah. experience. Yeah. I went to the red light district with my husband, like a typical tourist. Yeah. And I was trying to get him to let one of the girls suck his dick, but he wouldn't do it. Because they do it for like 150 bucks. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You I can't just be skip fun. past. You can't just skip past that. Like, I thought it'd be fun. Okay. Yeah. By the way, have you gone to Amsterdam? No, never. I, it's a, it's a bucket list. Okay, you need list. to do it. The girls, and I'm not even kidding you, you guys. And I know it's like maybe it's like I, I don't know their whole situation there. Apparently, they're treated well and they pay taxes and everything's legal and whatever. These are some of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. Really? Like I'm talking about models like yeah. so, i mean some of them yeah. not all of them <laughs> but you know a lot yeah, of them sure, sure, a yeah. lot of them i was walking by and i was like i just want to like take all of them to america and give them an instagram account and then they'll, <laughs> they won't have to suck dick anymore you know what i mean like girl let me get you on some fit tea yeah, and some you know seriously. let me get you that sugar bear hair like... ads you know you won't have to you won't have to be <laughs> sucking some fat guy's cock anymore really though truly this isn't where i thought it was gonna go with with you asking me about my last name, but I love it. We're I'm just trying now. to say, but by the way, loved Amsterdam, no, yeah. and I know it's in that general vicinity. It's yeah. no, it's nowhere near. It's du- it is Dutch, right? Yeah. Am I wrong? No, that's why I was wondering why are you? Okay, so I'm not that? wrong. Amsterdam is Dutch because I got clogs there, and I'm fucking like I know that shit's Dutch. The Netherlands, right? Yeah. So it was the by the way the most beautiful people, everyone. Really. And they ride bikes everywhere, I've, and they're so healthy. I've heard um, you have to go. I've heard like just the the scenery and just oh the environment is, it's, is beautiful. It's, it's like a unreal oasis. Yes, yeah. It's like a storybook. I've wanted to go. Um, my my last name also has Belgian. It is roots. So um, I've wanted to kind of get over there and experience go to Belgium. You know, at least yeah. But I just never have. Where, why, why, where have you, have you traveled a lot? I travel no? a lot. Okay, okay, but just not over just there. Just never there. You would love it's, it. It's definitely on the list. Um, it's really just more about like finding the time. Yeah. I also kind of thought it might be fun to go with like a group of people. Yeah. Um, my fiance and I have been traveling a little bit. We just, we got engaged in Iceland, which was. Whoa. Crazy. Did you get engaged in one of those crazy hotels that has like the, uh, like hot pool in the cold winter? No? <laughs> no Am I watching I... too many TikToks? <laughs> Too much TikTok? I was going to say, They're I was like, like, I don't know what the hell. There's these like <laughs> hotels in Iceland that have, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it's, okay. it's out in the, in the yeah. open and yeah. it's like hot yeah. and you go in it. Yeah. Did you do that? No, we didn't do it, but I know okay. what you're talking about. Okay. I know what you're talking about. So, how was getting engaged? How did, uh, it, did it go without a hitch? It, um, yeah, it went without a hitch. Okay, I didn't good. really have a plan. Uh huh. Um, I, had, I had the ring and it was so funny. My dad had to help me get Aww. through um, security. Because oh. we were leaving, so we went and saw my family for Christmas mm-hmm. in uh, in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and so I, I had the ring. My mom worked at a jewelry store her whole life, so mm-hmm. Claire's. Oh, my whole- <laughs> so she, um, so it's she a ring bro- pop, <laughs> a convenience store, by the way. Um, so she brought the ring up. She brought the ring up with her. Wow. To, to Christmas and showed it to me for the first time. I'd like helped design it and everything, but I'd never seen it in person. So Whoa. my whole family's like in on it except for except for my fiance you know right. she's just kind of like why are you guys all huddling in the room yeah like, can't, she's like in. they're talking shit on me he's, <laughs> yeah, he's planning me. to dump me they hate me <laughs> um so we had this plan so we were going straight from there to iceland wow and we had always wanted to go to iceland so i was like i'm gonna do it do it there maybe under the northern lights you know who knows whoa yeah. okay yeah yeah so i didn't really have a plan but i just knew i wanted to do it there and um it turns out my dad was leaving in the, you know flying out at the same time we were and i'm uh-huh. like well, i don't want to go through security with it 
because um, you know if it goes off or if they check my bag, like it's gonna ruin. They're like, everything. damn, look at that rock. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the lucky bitch? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you know, what can we do? And he was like, I'll take it. I'll go through. Aww. He's like, and he went through a different line, and mm. he was all nervous. And we had this really awkward exchange in the middle of the, you know, Atlanta airport. Yeah. You know, giving me. <laughs> She's <laughs> like, are Drew and his dad passing <laughs> drugs? Seriously, she looked at us. We were on the escalator. She looked at us, and we, he's got his hand in my coat pocket. <laughs> Weird. I would be like, all right, something fucked up. So she up's looked happening. back, and him and I are kind of looking at her like, yeah. Oh my <laughs> god. Know? Playing it cool. It was a very, very tense moment for me because I was like, if she asks me anything, I'm not gonna be able to lie. Like, I can't. You know. Did she have no clue? She had no idea. Really? She says she had an idea, or she says she has not hope. Yeah. But personally, I don't think she did. Really? That's just me. I was pretty. I was pretty careful with it. I was Good. With it. Um, and so we didn't end up. Didn't end up doing it on the Northern Lights, but we did. It ended up working out really. Where did really you do well it? On this um this black sand beach in, in in Iceland. Yeah. Was it hot? No, no. It was, it was New Year's Eve. Freezing. So it was freezing cold. You're like, let's um, go to the beach. She's like, bitch, I <laughs> am freezing. It's one of those things. It's one of those things. Like when you go to Iceland, it's one of the places that you have to see. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of on this list, like the touristy list of places to go. It's a black sand beach, but you really feel like you're in Mars. You're on Mars. Wow. I mean, the, the scenery and the atmosphere is like nothing you've ever seen. Wow. Um, so we were there by ourselves, and I was like, this is kind of... Perfect. And the sun was setting. Oh. And so it was kind of... Um, it was kind of perfect. Yeah. So what did you do? Did you just get yeah. down on a knee, and she was just like... I actually told her, I was like, you know, this is amazing. It's like an amazing backdrop. <laughs> she's like, she's gonna yeah. Kill, she's going yeah, to kill me. Um, so I said, <laughs> I said, you know, you got to go stand over there and I'll get like this amazing, you know, uh, photo of you. Mm -hmm. You know, you could post it, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I knew, you know, she's a girl, she wants the photo. She's yeah. not going to turn around or ruin it. I was like, be very still. Yeah. Um, and so I just set my book bag up, you know, fished the ring out. I love how you head. always have a book bag. <laughs> You're just like a really good student. <laughs> by the way, by the way, because the thing was, I didn't want to leave it in the room. Right, right. So I had it with me because I also didn't have a plan. Okay. So I always had it with good. me, you know, on me. Smart. Um, and so I set my phone up mm -hmm. on the book bag. And I just, you know, went over there and, and yeah, got down on the end and did it. And it's all on video. Um, you videotaped it? I video Look And I didn't you. even check the frame. I was so kind of like out of body. <laughs> it's just your asses. No, seriously. <laughs> it literally looks like someone was standing there filming us. It was perfect. The sun is setting in the background. People have seen the video and they're like, oh, my God, the planning. Did you post and it I'm or like, no? And I'm like, I didn't. No, of course not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't plan. Uh -huh. Like, it wasn't that planned. It looks beautiful, but oh. I didn't plan. Um, and she was speechless speechless like she Aww. she she had, I had no idea especially at the time too wow so it was a really good moment it worked out oh yeah. my god and when was that that was new year's eve um a year last not this one we just had yeah the last one the before last one, and yeah. when are you guys getting married do you have a date yet we don't have a date we don't, you don't have a date. plan we don't, it. we haven't had a plan happen. yeah we kind of just taking things day by day good and you know it was one of those things where i knew that was the step that i wanted to take yeah um but we're both on the same page as far as like let's just take our time and you know that's we'll get awesome. There when we get there. We probably aren't going to do anything extravagant. You I know, love that. My husband proposed perfect. to me in the bedroom, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was all, "I guess here you go." Okay, <laughs> take this. <laughs> he just threw it at my head. I'm like, "Ow, what is that? Oh, hell yeah!" You've been great. No, you no, go. no. <laughs> You've been great. <laughs> Imagine if that's how he proposed to me. You've been great. You're great at sucking dick. I got a reward for you. Here you go. Um, really good. That's hilarious. Okay, so I want to get back to the movie because mm -hmm. we're talking about romance and off. stuff like yeah. that. We got off track. I mean, no, it's good because you're telling me all these stories. You told me some worst, which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but I have like a worst for you uh -oh. because when we were shooting, oh, no. you know, because we're talking about all this romantic stuff and it's making me think back to the film. Yeah. You got to stay in like a nicer hotel. You oh, they yeah. put they put all the all the uh, main characters <laughs> in like a normal, just, what was just, it? It just was the like actors, a Marriott. Just the actors who were there for longer periods of Right, time. right, right. Let's they were in a Marriott. Out. Okay, Let's the more that. important ones. Anyway, <laughs> so I was like, I, I play Pam's best friend, Brianna. And so the only other hotel that was nearby. It was a very small town. A very small, small town. town, upstate New York. Yeah. Was this busted ass, <laughs> what was the name of it? Do you remember the name? Oh, uh, I, I was going to, I would say. I want to say it was just... It had columns, okay? It had a fucking <laughs> giant... It looked like the fucking White House. I was like, what yeah. the fuck? 
It had an indoor. I actually never went. There. An indoor pool. It was terrifying. Okay, you're so lucky, right? They told me to stay away. It was horrifying. <laughs> okay, so they just started remodeling it. The hotel was built in like 1918. Old as shit. I walked in. I got there super late at night. I had Nina Duina with me. I remember that. The co-star. You don't remember you met me. I know. So I had her with me because I'm codependent and can't ever be alone. And so I get to the hotel and I'm checking in and everything's fucking rickety and creaky. And the guy behind the counter is a thousand. And he's like, we only have, <laughs> we only have rooms left on the third floor. He's like, no one likes to stay on the third floor. And I was like, why? And he's like, because apparently it's haunted. It's- I was like, oh, great. I already have a fucking anxiety disorder. I just Perfect. flew six yeah. hours to New York with my dog. I'm having several panic attacks. <laughs> like, I just have been in my relationship with my husband. I'm trying to be cool and not call him freaking the fuck out. So I'm like, okay, cool. I can handle this. Um, they had just renovated the hotel just above the third floor. And so everything above the third floor looked brand new. But of oh, course, wow. I get stuck. Shit. He takes me to my fucking room, right? And then the fucking security guard takes me to my room, which is creepy as shit. Like, you guys don't have a fucking bellhop? Like, what about Igor? He can't take me to my room. He's like, no, I'm too old. So they take me to the, my room, and I open the door, and it's like, no, and it's a fucking it. wooden door. Like, I don't know if you've ever been in like an old house, yeah. but you know how they have like wooden colonial doors yeah. with the with the glass handle, yeah, yeah. the fucking <laughs> glass handle. What the fuck is a glass glass handle? It's all yeah. open. It's got like the fucking what's the key? The keyhole? Yeah, like, yeah. like not like a actual, fucking no 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 yeah like yeah. an actual fucking yeah. skeleton key, not like the fucking little <laughs> the dit, dit card key. thing. Like yeah, I was yeah. I was in the movie The Skeleton Key. <laughs> anyway, so I open the door. The fucking wallpaper is literally still from 1918. It's like a patterned old wallpaper that's peeling. Okay, Drew, the Did wallpaper's you? peeling. It's okay. like it looks like there's been radiator leaking. Yeah. Like I don't know what. There's like the furniture is like from 1918. The bed has <laughs> posters, like you know, the poster bed. Everything's wooden. Terrible, right? So I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe I have to stay here. I actually called my agent and was like, I don't want to do this film. Yeah, by the way, <laughs> I- I'm leaving. I'm not doing this. I was like, I'm not trying to get uh like abducted by poltergeist. So I think I want to go home. <laughs> and where are all the blue M and M's? Yeah. That <laughs> and I'm not even a diva. No, like I would have been though. fine, right? But You're like great. it was scary. Anyway, I didn't so. even hear. See, this is how good you were. I didn't even. I didn't, I didn't hear, complain. I was, I was a producer on the film. I didn't complain. So I didn't hear anything. I told my agent, and then that was it. And she was like, just stick it out, be a big girl. How long you were know? you there? I was there for a week and a half. Okay. I actually you know. flew ha- home halfway oh, right. through yeah, because yeah. I didn't want to. I had four days off. <laughs> you were like, I heard a I voice coming from. I just paid to fly myself <laughs> home because I couldn't stay in the room any longer. Anyway, so I'm in the room. I'm trying to make myself at home, right? Yeah. There's a wooden shelf that has like some fucking creepy books from 1918 on it next to my four poster bed. And Nina has her ball and she keeps bringing Aww. me her ball and I'm like unpacking my stuff and I'm just throwing it over my shoulder, right? Yeah. And she keeps bringing it back and I'm just like, okay, whatever, throwing it over my shoulder. And then I you know she brings me her ball I throw it over my shoulder and then I turn around and she's still staring at me wagging her tail and I'm like I threw the ball like what is happening and then I turn around and I look and it the ball is sitting perfectly on the fucking shelf no. next to the books no. perfectly the yellow the tennis ball is sitting there green tennis ball sitting there fucking perfectly and I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> so I call down to the fucking security because they're the only person there is security yeah, that sure. late at night. It's like two o'clock sure. in the morning. And the security guard comes up to my room and I was like, is this motherfucking hotel haunted for real? And he goes, yeah, he said, it yeah. is. He says, yeah. He, says, he didn't yeah. even try to make me feel better. No, I'm not gonna lie He's you. like, yeah. He's like, I try not to walk my these halls by myself. What? Late at night. He's like, there's a lady in a, I don't know if it was a white dress or a blue dress. I don't remember. This was two years ago. And I need to remember the name of the hotel because if you Google the hotel, so then right, I get on Google, yeah, right? My worst yeah. enemy. <laughs> so then he leaves. He's like, yeah, there's a lady walking around in a fucking dress. I'm like, oh, fucking great. I'm all sweating. Like, I'm going to see this fucking bitch. I don't want to see the bitch in the dress, okay? I don't want to. I'm all yeah. trying to walk around with my eyes closed. I'm like, where's the shower? <laughs> so I fucking Google this hotel and it's been on that fucking paranormal show, the paranormal investigator no. show. Yes. Have you really? Yes. And it was one of the top haunted places in New York State. God, can I please remember the name? It was what well, we were in. Um, we were in um, Lake George. Lake, Lake George. George. Okay, it, so look up hotel in Lake George. Been the Lake George Hotel. It was something like that. I don't remember. I feel like it had Mayflower in it. I don't fucking know. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna find it later. I'm gonna tell you guys. Anyway, Google Lake George did Hotel. You, Big did, creepy columns. Did you anyway. talk to anyone else who stayed there? 
Yes, have, everyone was freaked out, but have... but they were all on the renovated floors. So they weren't in like the rooms that I was in. All the rest of the yeah. cast, I was the only one because I was the last one to get yeah. there that yeah. had to get the, sh- the fucking haunted ass room and stay on the haunted I didn't know floor. This, by the way. Yes, it was yeah, it was great. It was great. I had a great time. Fucking, I'm still tweaking out. You're from like, it. I can't wait to go. Back. <laughs> I can't, I can't wait. wait to... Can't wait to do another film together. Uh, can't wait to see where you next. Put me next. Fucking ca- <laughs> cabin in the woods. <laughs> anyway, so I fucking free. I'm freaked out, right? And I start Googling, and this hotel was on the paranormal investigator show. And they're like, yeah, there's a lady that walks around in a white dress. It was like she was killed on her wedding night. Some dramatic bullshit story, whatever, right? Not bullshit, though, right? So I always have nightmares. And that night, that first night I stayed in the room, bitch, I swear, I had the most insane dream. Like, I always have nightmares, but this one was gnarly. I was just going to say, did you have an experience? I'm laying in my bed, I'm fast asleep, and I open my eyes in my dream and think that I'm opening my eyes in real life, and I'm in the room, and I'm just laying in the bed, and Nina's there, and she's growling, and I'm like, what the fuck? And then my door opens, and it's all, and then a fucking scaly demon, red, Satan, with yellow eyes, comes in naked. No. Yes! <laughs> Why does it have to be naked? Why does it have to with be naked? With his big demon scaly horse cock, and he gets up on the bed, and he has long black mm. nails, and he fucking rips the covers off, and he starts carving pentagrams into my thighs with his nails. No. Drew, I shit you not. No. I swear to God. And I woke up the next day and I was like, ah, ah, like freaked the fuck out. And I just did not sleep the rest of the time I was there. And that's why I flew home halfway through. I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. Because you so were like, you got night, four days this... off. Yeah, I, was <laughs> I was like, bitch, I will get the fuck. Four days. I don't know. Four I days. Guess... I will be dead. I four guess I'll days. Just, uh, fly home. <laughs> yes. I paid for it myself. I was like, 850 bucks. Here we go. I was making like. <laughs> it's worth It's worth the. Literally. Worth the I was making like every. That was trauma. what I made on the movie. <laughs> I was like, I will use that. <laughs> <laughs> to fly home. Pay me, pay me so I, I did. can get out of here. I, did. I took the money I made to fly home. That's good. And I did for four days and then came back. I and so that, yeah. and then when I came back, I called every day before I came back and I was like, I need to stay on the renovated floor. Yeah. I need to stay on the renovated floor. Did they I need put you in a new room? Yes, they oh, finally did when I came back. I brought Nina and we stayed on the renovated floor and it was totally fine. Does she travel everywhere with you? Yeah. She's my best friend. She good? She they good give you point? such a hard time, though. It's like I have, like, obviously several yeah, mental you gotta, disorders. but <laughs> You got to jump through, like, real. Like, they real want me to, they want to, like, see my medication. Yeah. I'm like, here, let me just put it all on the counter for you there, Shirley. Just play it for everybody. <laughs> Feel better about your <laughs> own life. I'm like, if I don't have my dog, I'm going to freak the fuck out, okay? I'm going to fucking, I'm going to go crazy on all these goddamn passengers. I'm going to make someone up there hold me, and is they're not going to want to. Is she good on the. She's so good, like how she is here. She, yeah. she just goes to sleep. She's a really good dog. She's really sweet. Anyway, so that was my experience on the film. Guys, make sure to check out Spy Intervention <laughs> starring Drew Van Acker. I have a part in it. I'm funny in She's it. She's hilarious in it. I'm going to share. Don't let her downplay. It's fun. I hope we get to do more movies together. We will. I haven't done we anything will. since that. Oh, yes, I did. I did a TV show, but that's it. But but I want to do more stuff. You should. Have you been busy? I've been busy, yeah. Well, what's that like? <laughs> I'm just here uh, doing my podcast. I'm all, all right. Well, here's another <laughs> podcast for you guys. <laughs> just um, following no, no, no. my we, dreams. We, we need to. You're you're beyond. And I'm not just saying that because I'm here. I said this in interviews Aww, when you weren't in the room. Thanks. You know, you're beyond. You're beyond funny. I found myself, you know, pulling out of scenes because I was just watching you <laughs> and the scenes with you and Blake together. I was like, this is just it's genius. You know, and people were like, well, what was it like? Because they come from such this comedy background. You know? Yeah. Um, and for me, it was like, it was an absolute learning experience because you guys have such this, you have such a fluid and, and nothing, and I'm sure you've been told this before, nothing rattles you. No. Nothing rattles you. Blake is the too same. Much. <laughs> <laughs> Your eyes right there, you're like, I've seen too much. I've seen way too much, Drew. Um, okay. You guys, you guys have this like, you're totally present in the mm-hmm. scene and, and in your character, and then you just have this innate ability to let it go Thanks. and like nothing nothing phases you and it's like you know Milray was cool with letting us kind of go and seeing yeah. where everything went so I found myself just watching you guys yes and, and you know watching Blake and watching you and watching you guys interact and just seeing how 
funny it was, but it was so like off the cuff. You know what I mean? Like it, it was just, really fun. Yeah, I love doing that film. And actually, I was so impressed with you and Poppy because you guys had so much dialogue. Well. I was having anxiety for you. <laughs> like I was like, oh my god! Like I was like sweating just like looking yeah. at you guys like just fucking page remember, after page remember, after page. I think, you, I think you said something to me. You were like, do you know all that? I was like, do you really like, know sure all that? So. I would just make it up. I'd be like, anyway, so A B C D E F G. Um, I've had, you, I've heard people who have like earpieces. Oh, and we'll be fed huge there. actors. Yeah. And I'm not going to name names, but I'll tell you after. Yeah. Huge actors, they get IFBs, and they get their lines read to them because they're either too old to yeah, read sure. anymore, I can't, or they just don't want to memorize. I can't fathom that. Right? I mean, I guess I guess I can, but for me, it would just kind of take me out of it like, would totally what take I'm doing. me out. You know what I mean? And like mm. being in this moment, like even just sitting here with you now, having someone being like, all right, so now, like, saying, now you're going to laugh. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, it just doesn't feel like what it's Daniel's coming. been doing the whole time. <laughs> it's yeah, weird, it right? Feel like it would be—I I don't know, genuine. But I—I I have never seen a performance and gone, "He's being fed lines." Or but she's they being are. Fed lines, but they are so so often. It must, it must really work. Did you see the Irishman? Oh, so you're gonna go ahead and call him out? I'm not gonna say oh, who, okay. but <laughs> okay. you saw it. I did see it. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard, it's yeah, kind of crazy. Like you would think that like the other actor too that would kind of fuck them up because er, someone's and listening. Is there, is there a delay? Exactly. You know? I bet there is. is. There a delay, like. So anyway. <laughs> so what I was saying to you, you know what I mean? <laughs> like the other person's just. You know, I, I would. Guess you kind of have to know. I know. It. I feel like one day they're like working on replacing us with robots. Did you hear about that? I've heard. Isn't that weird? It's weird. It's weird, but it's it's. It only seems like the natural progression of how everything is going. I mean, you know we're I mean? a long way off. We are a long way off. Hopefully, you'll get a nice, long, healthy I career. Heard, I just heard they're they're doing a movie. Uh, did you read about this? They're doing a movie and bringing um, or trying to bring like James Dean. Back, back from as the a dead. Character. See, and I'm like, what? I could see it. I I just can't. I can't imagine. Cause they're doing. They're even having people uh, do concerts. Like yeah. the they're what is it called? The yeah. hologram. Yeah. They're having people do concerts like Tupac and stuff. Like yeah. their hologram is doing the concert. Which is, it's insane. I've seen that. I've seen those. I've seen those, and it's. I get, I mean, it's it's cool. You're you like know? I lost the job to uh, Marlon Brando. <laughs> I'm, I'm <pretty laughs> He's been dead for off fucking. about it. <laughs> Anyway, guys, yeah. make sure to follow Drew Van Acker on all social media. Or you just yeah. you're just Drew Van Acker on yeah. everything, right? Yeah. And do you want to spell really that clever. for everybody? I'm really, really clever. V- really original. A- D-R-E-W-V-A-N-A-C-K-E-R. Yeah, it's easy. Van it's very easy. Acker. Van Acker. Spell it out. You know what's funny is people will say it, and I don't understand how you can say- Ackerman? Like, I don't know how you can say Aker. Aker. I, I, I can you see know? it. A-C-K is, yeah. is always an act sound. Ack, yeah. So. I was right. I you said it right. right. See? You guys, I'm you're good at some than, things. Yeah. You're smarter than most. I try. I try. Yeah. Um, and make sure to check out the movie that we're in, Spire Intervention, which is- Oh, I it's forgot. It's going to be out doing a movie. everywhere, right? It's like <laughs> on iTunes out. and- It's everywhere. It's, it's in everywhere. Theaters. It's in theaters on Friday. It's in theaters. theaters. Okay, so w- this will be airing, so it's already in theaters. So if you, it, you know, it's a small theater release, I think, mm-hmm. right? But it's check your town. Who knows? It could be playing at the- Yeah, it's at a bunch of big cities. Wisconsin um, Cheese Factory. Who knows? <laughs> It could be playing at, you yeah. know, who knows? It yeah. could be there. Yeah. But make sure to check it out. It's really Valentine's funny. Day. It's a Valentine's Day movie. It's a lighthearted comedy. If you want to watch it with your friends, you get to see these two ugly mugs. Mm-hmm. And uh, thank you so much for being here today. And we'll check y'all next week on Worst Verse. <laughs>